Hello and welcome. This is Frederick from Tech Nordics. Going to give you a tour around the RSA 306 and some features and benefits, which is included for free. So the RSA 306 is a USB powered and you know driven uh, real-time spectrum analyzer or real-time signal analyzer. Um, there are some limitations with the hardware design, so we were not uh, able to consume more than 3.9 watts of power in this case, and it actually reflects in our data sheet. So it's much better what, than what the data sheet says. Let's go for presets. So I'm going to go give you two real examples. We go to VLAN band and I put the ref level down to minus 30. I will go up here and enable trace 2, which is a max hold or peak hold. So this is what people are used to do today. You know, they're slowly building a waveform saying this is the worst instance and this is how the signal looks like. Um, we have, and I will go through this now, there's a uh, general signal viewing. All of these are included for free with RSA 306. The analog modulation is included for free. The difference here is you can set the individual bandwidth of these ones. And the RF measurement is for free. And spur is used, occupied bandwidth and signal strength. This is the most common one used. Then we have another additional, this costs extra money, it's a general purpose digital demodulation, so we can demodulate almost any kind of standard. We have OFDM, audio, Bluetooth, LTE, P25, which is the US Tetra, radar, I will not talk about the tracking, and VLAN. So you can do a lot of kind of compliance or pre-compliance testing with this to check if the constellation is good or phase error is good or summer is good. So, okay. Oh, I should have chosen the DPX. So the DPX, for those who don't know, DPX is a way that we do an FFT. Instead of putting it to memory, put it into a kind of a pixel, mat pixel matrix. And behind each pixel, there is a counter, a timer and a resetter. I mean, that's basically it. And this gives you the opportunity to do really real time and have a feeling of real time. And I can control some of them. I can control how, you know, if 10 hits is going to be really red and if we're going to reset after one second of 50 seconds. So I will just add here, you know, the same thing. So we have a max hold and I will clear this one and clear this one and just let it run for a couple of seconds. So first of all, you see that you can actually see what's going on on this side. Here you kind of lost a little bit. Uh, it's much slower and this gives you not only what's happening now, but it can also give you insight of signals under signals, for example. In this case we have, I can clear this again and I can clear this again. And you can see, you know, which one tells you the most. So this is what we call the discover part. Discover what's, you know, what's hidden in the RF. And when you see this, then you can start discussing about triggering, etc. So I will close this window and I will focus a little bit how you can tweak the DPX and what other things you can do to get a more feeling for what kind of signals you see. So I close this one. I right click here and I just move this one in the middle. I'm going to remove uh, the max hold. And I'm just also going to remove the trace. So I just work with the bitmap. So here's the bitmap. And here you can see one of the spurs, by the way. So this is VLAN live. We have this SIG frequency. And I press this wheel of... And here I can do some settings. So the first setting I can do is telling, you know, the counter. You know, how often should it refresh itself? So let's put it to 10 seconds instead. So after 10 seconds, you know, if the signal has been present 10 seconds, it will slowly fade away. Um, second thing is the, the, you know, how do we color code? 1000 hits should be red or 50 hits should be red. And I can do auto color. And we have a max and min percent. And we can also change the curve. And this gives you a little bit more inside of the signal. Second thing we can do is listen to the signal. You know, some people think I'm crazy, but that's actually a good way to, to have a feeling what kind of signal we're running. So I just run the, the demodulator. So you can feel this is a burst of signal. And there's a way to see this visually also if you go for a split. On the top I will have a, what a kind of waterfall diagram. And I will go down in time a little bit. And this one is controlled. The settings here are controlled at the amplitude scale. So I go here and I just put this up a little bit. 
and then I put the max down a little bit. So here we can see you can make it even a little bit shorter. And if I want to measure the distance between the bursts here, I just press stop. I go and add marker. And I have one marker here, and I put it over here. And I put another marker, add marker, and put the marker over here. And there is a delta readout here, like 100 milliseconds. And if I want to see that I'm really getting it, I can go and down here, remove the bitmap and only show the ogram line which is on now so this is m1 here's the burst and this is the mr so here's right so 100 100 100.8 milliseconds between these bursts so let's go enable the bitmap again and just run this so this is this is how you can do it there's another thing here which is you know i like and it's kind of hidden it's when you go in for density and show measurements you get the kind of a this bar and this bar can tell you the occupation, how much of the signal is present all of the time. So in this case, it's kind of CV, but in this bar, I haven't, you know, it's not completely covered. But in this case, there's a signal present 65% of what's in that square box. I probably can tweak it a little bit better. I'm not sure I can do that uh, like this. Yeah. But if I move this one over here and just get a feeling, I can see that the signal is present 1.3, 1.4% of the time. And in our bigger brother, the, the bigger RSAs, we can use this as trigger conditions. So we cannot only trigger on amplitude and frequency, we can also trigger on things that change over time. We call it trigger on this. So what is this useful for? So let's say you work on IoT things and you have some open bands at 868. Let's take a look what the difference would be for you. So instead here we put 860 megahertz and we set the ref level down a little bit when it's 40. We enable trace 2 with max hold. I go in here, I press the DPX. I go for the DPX, I said enable trace 2 with so max hold. I go to a split. Like this and I'm going to tweak this a little bit. This. Probably a little bit faster is okay. And then we have the amplitude scale. And that would be, but we're going to reduce the bandwidth a little bit to 100. Oh, somebody's trying to call me. Like this. And we clear this one, and we clear this one, and you can start seeing, you know, what is the difference between these two. Here you can, you know, you can really lively see that there's something going on here. The level is not that high, but there's something going on. While in this case, it hasn't even spotted what's going on. So if I can go to 3D, and get a picture of it. And of course, the max here, you know, we should really go down a little bit. So we can like this, so it gets a bit nicer. So these are the things you can use for your IoT device to see that, you know, is something transmitting? Is there something here? And you're more likely to see it. And as you saw, I mean, can I really sh change the resolution bandwidth of this one, uh, even in the DPX? In this case, we, we have two pulses over here that's come some kind of transmitter. This is very basically what you can do. So if you you know close this one, you think it's you know it's not worth, and you run this again. And if you feel that you have some data, you can put this in 3D if you like, and you can stop here whenever you want and just replay. You can start doing measurements here also if you like to do that. So in the case, what is this pulse? You go here and add marker, and you move in here, and you have a, you have your pulse here, and you have your pulse here. And you can add here, add marker, marker the peak. Oh, where did you go? Add marker here. Uh, ah. Anyway, so uh, here you are, and there you go, and it's probably around uh, 868, which is the open band. So this last thing I wanted to tell you is that you can save this easily, and you can recall. So if you go to File and Save As, you save this, you can file name, you put it as uh, uh, Acquisition Data with Setup. Or in this case, I'm going to recall a file, which is kind of nice. It's strange VLAN with disturbance. And I will recall it and replay it and do some, you know, simple measurements. So we have data and setup. 
and I can put it at you know, 3D and I can just replay this one. And of course I need to enable ogram line like this. So in this case, you know, we can see there's a VLAN burst, but my VLAN went down all the time and I couldn't understand what's going on. I recorded this when this happened and I found out it's the neighbor's microwave oven that disturbs my VLAN burst here. This is the channel I'm using. I hope you think you find this interesting and I might do a part two when we look at the demodulation and how you can use this for a VLAN test.